welcome back to my channel it's your girl marina here and as always i'm excited to welcome you to another video in today's video guys i'm going to be sharing with you five things that i wish i had a better understanding of when i first arrived in canada i've lived in canada for about six plus years now and there's some things that i wish i had a better understanding of when i first arrived and that's what i'm going to be sharing with you guys in today's video before we proceed i'd like to give a huge shout out to rbc for partnering with me and sponsoring today's video that I wish I had a better understanding of when I first arrived in Canada is the taxes and how it is applied. Sales taxes, which means that the price that you see on a shelf in a store is going to be different from what you pay at the till because the sales tax then gets applied. I wish I understood how different it was and it shows up everywhere in like grocery stores to retail stores and it is also very different when you're buying children's stuff. The sales tax in Canada depending on the province you live in can range from anywhere from 5% to almost 15% in some provinces so I wish I had a better understanding of that and not to talk about how that show up when it comes to your income the income tax. I remember getting my first offer letter and getting very excited about the figure that I saw until the actual figures hit my account and I was almost sure payroll made a mistake. <laughs> For every job that I've been in as a new employee, I am that employee who will always email payroll and say something is wrong with what I was paid and they will reply me back with the same answer, nothing is wrong, we followed legislation. I wish I understood that the amount on the offer letter is very different from what actually hits your bank account. Absolutely nothing prepared me for the taxes and the deductions that hit my paycheck every pay cycle. If you're a regular on my channel, you would have heard me talk about the second area multiple times and that is definitely the weather. I wish I had a better understanding of how extreme the temperatures in Canada can get, especially if you live in the prairies like I do. In the summer, it is extremely extremely hot and in the winters it does get brutally cold that is one shocker that i am yet to adjust to six years later the third thing that i wish i knew about when i first arrived in canada is the culture of tipping that's when you're required to pay like uh, an additional payment on services rendered it's typically like a percentage of the value of the service tipping is typical in hair salons nail salons restaurants and with food delivery services now this was a conversation that my spouse and I were having recently because I don't fully understand it's supposed to be an optional um, payment made but in some places it's almost like you don't have an option my spouse and I were talking about this diff um, recently and I thought it was a bit confusing you know maybe I shouldn't be talking about this alone i would invite him to come share his experience with tipping in Canada Okay, so welcome, mister. I'm sharing <laughs> about five things that I wish I knew more about when oh. I first arrived in Canada. Okay. And I was talking about <clears throat> tipping. And I remember the conversation you and I were having recently about yeah. tipping. So do you want to share? How do you feel about the culture of tipping in Canada? Um, to, to be honest, it was a bit um, surprising. Not surprising in a way that it was there, but the fact that sometimes it's you don't have an option. Really. Exactly. Your, you know, depending on the service you have, if it's good, if it's bad, you end up paying for it. And I don't know if you talked about how much, it, you know, that percentage could be up to 35%. Yes, we've well, seen it up to 35% in some places. Yeah, it is a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. <laughs> but that's something that we're learning to accept. Um, the only part, I have no problem tipping, just so we're clear, mm -hmm. but the only part I don't understand is where, whether you're impressed with the service, yeah. whether you like the food. Some restaurants have their tips built into the bill, which I find a bit sneaky. That's the part <laughs> that I complain about. Yeah. But, but that's something we're learning to adjust to because it's part of the life here and accepting that is part yeah. of accepting the Canadian culture in a way, right? Exactly. Okay, so what other area would you say you wish you had a better understanding of when we first arrived in Canada? I would say just the fact of how big this country is, mm -hmm. it is massive. Like, I, I think I was reading up, it was like six um, different time zones. That's correct. That is huge. <laughs> yeah. And, and another thing I find very interesting about the size of the country is just how independent of each other the oh, provinces yeah. are. Oh, yeah. Where you have, like, each province does your own thing, basically. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, there's sometimes some... What one province does, you know, you know, leads another province to do it. But, you know, in terms of government-wise and policies and all of that, they're absolutely different. Absolutely. It's like having many, many countries inside one country. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Do I have to go now? 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the fifth thing that I wish I had a better understanding of, and this would be the most important one to me that I wish I educated myself a lot more, is about the Canadian credit and credit history. A credit history is simply a record of how credit worthy you're considered to be. The better your credit history, the higher your credit rating, and with a high credit rating, it, it expands the option of credit services that you're able to access. So it is important to keep a healthy credit rating. Canada is a very credit driven country and literally everything depends on your credit history and your credit rating. With no Canadian credit history, you cannot access certain services like most phone plans, getting a car and even renting a house. Some landlords make newcomers to Canada who don't have Canadian credit history pay many months of rent in advance because of that. I remember that when we first moved here, we had to pay about three months of rent in advance because we had no Canadian credit history. Some banks will offer you a credit card as a newcomer, but with such low limits that it takes a long time for you to build up a healthy credit score. One main way that newcomers can begin to build a credit history in Canada is by getting a credit card and begin spending your day-to-day -day expenses on the credit card and paying the monthly bills on your credit card as at when due. Not only is a credit card a great way to build a credit history, it is also a useful financial tool to help you um, with the necessities that come up, the expenses that come up when you're settling into life in this new country. And of course, we know how those unexpected expenses can come up from the cost of childcare, from um, setting up your new apartment, to the high cost of groceries and other household essentials. In order to build good credit and maintain a high credit score, you need to know how to manage your credit which means that you should not be spending more than you can afford on a credit card. Credit card is not free money. You do not just go on a shopping spree because you have a credit card. You must spend responsibly on it and make sure you're paying back your monthly credit card balances as at when due. The number one tip when you're trying to get a credit card is to make sure that you're working with a bank that understands your needs as a newcomer and believes in you. That's where the RBC newcomer advantage comes in. Newcomers who bank with RBC who get approved for a credit card with a credit card limit that is much higher than what you may expect from Canadian banks, which makes it easier for you to settle in sooner and realize the full potential of life in Canada. With the RBC newcomer advantage, newcomers who bank with RBC can get up to $15,000 credit card limit with no credit history required on your first RBC credit card. For, and for a limited time offer, you can get 6% cash back on your RBC Cashback MasterCard for a period of three months. That's a bonus of 4% on top what you would typically get. Um, newcomers who arrive in Canada typically arrive without a job offer. So for the first few weeks, you are without a source of income. So a little cash back goes a long way in helping helping you to manage all the expenses that can arise from settling into life in a new country, especially when all the expenses are mounting up. You can also access no monthly fee banking with an eligible account for up to one year. There's no minimum balance required and you can earn points on debit. You can also access free Interact e-transfer transaction, no RBC fee when you use another bank ATM in Canada and lots more. I highly recommend RBC because they understand your needs as a newcomer and offers a stable foundation for you to begin to make the right um, financial decisions and explore the full potential of life in Canada. So what are you waiting for? So check out the link in the description box to see how you can get started with RBC and take advantage of the amazing services that they offer or you can speak to an RBC advisor in person or virtually like I did. A huge thank you again to RBC for sponsoring today's video. Well thank you everyone for watching today's video. I hope you learned a thing or two from it. If you have lived in Canada a while, what is that one thing you wish you had a better understanding of when you first arrived in Canada? Please leave that in the comment section. I'd like to hear from you and learn from you as well. Please do not forget to subscribe on your way out and until I come your way in the next one it is Marina saying thank you and have an awesome day. Bye guys!